So today let's tackle an example on speed control of a DC series motor. And the example two entails where a diverter is connected across the field circuit. So in our example two, we have a 500 volt series motor as an amateur resistance of 0 0.38 ohm and a series field resistance of 0 0.32 ohm. It takes a current of 96 amps at a speed of 9, 10 RPM. If the load is kept constant and the magnetic circuit is unsaturated, determine the speed of the motor when a diverter of 0 0.64 ohm is connected across the field. So before we solve this, we need to put down the parameters given. So we have in our solution, in our solution, we are given V, so 500 ohms, 500 volts, We are given RA 0 0.38 ohm. We are given RS, series field resistance, 0 0.32 ohm. We are given R, the diverter resistance, 0 0.64 ohm. We are also given uh, IA1, current taken from the supply, which moves up to the armature. This is 96 amp. We are given N1, now 610 RPM. We are given We are given that the T1, T1 is equal to T2. That is, torque 1 is the same as torque 2 because the load torque is kept constant. We are being also being told the magnetic circuit is unsaturated. That means what? That means our phi is proportional to the current, field current, IF, is proportional to the field current that is going to pass through the field coils. So when the magnetic circuit is unsaturated, phi is always proportional to field current. So from there now, we are ready now to solve that the unknowns which are not there from our speed equation. So before we proceed, we need to get the second amateur current. What will be flowing through, uh, through the armature if the diverter is already now connected across the field? Now what will be the amateur current? So now we say since T1 is equal to T2. This implies what? Our phi1, IA1, will be equal to phi2, IA2. This implies also, because phi is proportional to the field current, and the current passing through the coil in initial stage is IA1. So this implies IA1 squared phi 2 now, according to the circuit, uh, according to the circuit now, from a circuit which you can draw now, here, somewhere here, so that you see, you have a small circuit to show, a small circuit to show.
So this is our A2, this is our RD, this is our RS. So here we have the amateur. And here we have our EB2. EB2. Now, the current flowing here will be ID. The current flowing here will be I S. That is the current that is flowing there, it will be I S. So from this diagram, R phi 2 is proportional to I S. So we say here, I S multiplying I A, I A 2. But our I S can be found through what we call, through what we call current divider rule. So our I S is a proportion of I A 2, which will be given by R D, R D, all of our RD plus RS. The whole of this multiplying I A2. That represents IS. Now we multiply with this other I A2. We multiply with that other I A2. So this implies what? Our I A1 squared will be proportional to RD was 0 0.64 all over 0 0.64 plus 0 0.32. So this one is multiplying IA2 which will be squared. So this one will be equal to, uh, when you analyze this is 2 all over 3, IA2 squared. That is IA1, which is squared. So from here, our IA2 will be equal to the square root of, will be equal to the square root of 3IA1 squared. 3IA1 squared all over 2, which will be equal to square root of. 3 all over 2 times 96 squared. This one will be equal to 117.58 amps. 117.58 amps. That is our IA2. Now with IA2 ready, we can now be able to obtain the value of EB2, the second back EMF. EB2. So EB2, EB1, we can calculate for EB1 first. Before we get our EB2. EB1 will be equal to V minus IA1 RA minus IA1 RS which will be equal to V minus IA1 into RA plus RS, which is equals to V. Uh, our voltage was 500 volts. Our voltage was 500 volts. Our IA1 was 96 amps. 
our RA 0.38 plus RS 0.32 which is equals to Or 32.8 was EB2 EB2 will be equal to V minus IA2 RA minus IS minus IS multiplying RS which is equals to V minus IA to RA but IS is equals to 2 all over 3 IA to RS which will be equal to V minus IA to N to RA plus 2 all over 3 12 over 3 RS which will be 500 minus I to 117.58 into RA which is 0 0.38 plus 12 over 3 times RS which is 0 0.32 which is equals to 430.2.24 was so with EB2 ready, EB1 ready, and we have our IA2 ready, our IA1 ready, phi1, we, we can know what contributes to it. Phi2, we also know what contributes to it. So we can now go to speed equation so that we get our N2. Therefore, our N2, we, N2, will be equal to EB2 all over EB1. Now multiply phi1 all over phi2. Now multiplying N1 which is equals to EB2 times phi1, what contributes to phi1 is IA1 times now N1 there all over EB1 times phi2 is brought about by 2 all over 3 IA2 times uh, times 12 over 3 IA2, which will be simply I'd say if I1 is brought about by IA1, not IA2, IA1. IA1. If I1 is brought about by IA1, so it is EB2 times IA1 times N1, all over EB1 times 12 over 3 IA2. So from this, we can insert those values. So we have this as 430.24 times I196 times N1610 all over 
AB1, which is 4, 432.8, 432.8 was times 2 all over 3, times 2 all over 3, times, times IA2, which is 117, 117.58. When we calculate this, now we get the answer as. So the speed will be equal to 742.66 RPM. Uh, 742.66 RPM, that's revolutions per minute. And that will be the new speed when a diverter of such is connected across the field circuit. Okay. This is also an example on speed control, but on a shunt field or on a DC shunt motor, but this is where we are having the amateur control. We are going to do some modification to the amateur circuit so as to control our speed. So this is an example of amateur control or rheostatic control of a DC motor. So in our solution, we need to note down the parameters given. So in our solution, we are given RA. 0 0.1 ohm, R shunt, 230 ohms, we are given V is equals to 230 volts. Two hundred and thirty volts. We are also given a current our I one is equals to sixty amps. Our I one will be sixty amps. That means our I two will also be sixty amps because current taken from the supply remains unaltered. So I one sixty amps. I two also sixty arms. So we are given N, N1, N1 at a speed, N1 is 1000 RPM, and N2 where we should reduce our speed to is 750, 760 RPM, 760 RPM. That is N2. So those are the particulars that were given. So we can see from a circuit configuration. We can see from the circuit uh, what is required was dismissing so that we can be able to evaluate them. So, originally, originally, before resistance is inserted in our amateur circuit, we have our I shunt, I shunt one, I shunt one, was equal to V over R shunt, which is equal to 230, all over 230, which is just one amp, which is just one amp. This implies our IA1 is equal to I2, I1 minus I shunt 1, which is equal to 60 minus 1, which is equals to 59 amps, 59 
camps. That's originally. Now, after that, after knowing what we have before an introduction of a resistance in the amateur circuit, now we can draw the circuit that entails addition of a resistance in the amateur circuit. So we are drawing the circuit. So in this circuitry, we have a resistance which is being included in the amateur circuit. And now, what we have here, can enable us now to calculate for the value of R, given the conditions that we have. So the unknown that we have, we still don't have IA2, but IA2 can be gotten from I2. From the diagram, I shunt 2 will be equal to I shunt 1, which is equal to 1 amp. From the diagram, I shunt 2 will be equal to I shunt 1, which will be equal to 1 amp. Now, I A2 will be equal to I2 minus I shunt 2, which will be equal to 60 minus 60. Our I2 is also 60 minus I shunt 2, which is 1. So this is still 59 amps. So I A2 is also 59 amps. Amps. From here we can now evaluate. We can start by getting our EB1. EB1 will be V minus IA1 RA, which is uh, 230. IA1 was 59. Multiplying RA is 0 0.1. to 24.1 volts, just to 24.1 volts, maybe two. maybe two now will be equal to V minus IA2 RA minus IA2 we have those in series because this drop and that drop plus EB2 should give us the input voltage. So we have that and that giving us that which will be equal to V minus IA2 into RA plus R which is equal to V our V is 230 minus IA2, which is 59, and to RA, which is 0 0.1 plus R. This one simplifies to 224.1 minus 59R minus 59R minus 59R 
So that is the expression for EB2. Since we have EB1 ready, EB2 ready, we know what contributes to all those other currents. Uh, which, uh, we know what contributes to those uh, uh, to the field fluxes. So we can now use the speed equation to evaluate the value of this is R, which is to be connected in the amateur circuit to control our speed to 760 RPM. So we say E B. We say N two. All over N one should be equal to E B two. All over E B one. Multiplying phi one. All over phi two. Which is N two. All over N one is equals to E B two. E B two. All over E B one. What brings phi one is I shunt one. What brings phi two is I shunt two. So this implies our uh, N2 was 760, our uh, N1 was 1000, this one is equals to, is equals to EB2 to 24.1 minus 59R. All of them. EB1. What is our EB1? EB1 is 224.1. Now multiplying. I shan't one, one amp. I shan't two, one amp. So that is it. This implies now 224.1. Minus 59R will be equal to 760, 760 times 224.1 all over 1000, all over 1000. Therefore, 59R will be equal to 224.1 minus. 760 times 224.1 all over 1000, which should be equal to this is 53.78. 59R is equal to that. R will therefore be equal to. Zero point nine one one. Zero point nine one two. So this is the value of resistance required to be connected in the amateur circuit so as to reduce the speed of that motor to 760 RPM. So, um, in this example for, this is about the voltage control for the speed of a DC motor. We are trying to have an example involving voltage control. So a DC series motor drives a fan for which the torque varies as the square of the speed. The torque varies as the square 
of the speed. The armature and the series field resistances are 0 0.8 ohm and 0 0.4 ohm respectively. On 230 volts, it runs at 400 RPM and takes 36 amps. So we are supposed now to determine the input voltage required for this speed to be increased from 400 RPM to 500 RPM. So we note down what we are given, the parameters given. So we have V1. V1 is 230 volts. 230 volts. We have our V2. V2 is what we are looking for. Mm -hmm. We have our RA, 0 0.8 ohm. We have our RS, 0 0.4 ohm. We are also given IA1, IA1 36 amps, IA1 36 amp, we are given N1, 400 RPM, we are given N2, 500 RPM. 500 RPM. So from this, we can now have the torque analysis because torque varies as the square of the speed. So we are told T is proportional to N squared, N squared. Proportion varies as the square of the spin. This implies one. T1 will be proportional to N1 squared. T2 will be proportional to N2 squared. This implies one. T2 over T1 will be equal to N1, N2, all over N1, but all this being squared, all this being squared. But we know torque is normally proportional to the field flux, directly proportional to the field flux, and also directly proportional to field current. So this implies one. Torque, one, torque two will be proportional to phi two, Phi two, phi two, I A two. And torque one will be proportional to phi one, I A one. So this will be equal to N two, all over N one. This one square, squared. This implies what? Phi 2 will be brought about by IA2. So this will be IA2 squared. All of IA1 squared will be equal to N2 all of N1 squared. This implies what? This implies what? This implies IA2 all over IA1 is equals to N2 all over N1. Therefore, IA2 can be evaluated by N2 all over N1 now multiplying IA1. Multiplying IA1. Therefore, IA2 will be equal to our N2 was 500, 500, all over 400, that is our N1 times IA1, which is 36. 
uh, which is 36. So when we calculate this, uh, IA2, this will be 45 amps. Now with IA2 known, then we can get our EB1, we can get our EB2, and now we can proceed to the speed equation. We can proceed to the speed equation. So EB1 will be equal to V minus IA1, V minus IA1, V1 minus IA1, RA plus RS, which is 230 minus I1 36, RA 0 0.8, RS 0 0.4. So this one gives us That's one eighty six point eight was eighty six point eight was E B two will be equal to V two minus IA two and to R A plus R S which is equals to V two minus and what is our IA2 was 45 amps into 0 0.8 plus 0 0.4. This one gives us V2 minus, minus 54. So that is the expression for V2. For EB2, that is the expression for EB2. Then we can now move to the speed equation so that we can be able to establish the value of V2. This implies, and this implies, but now, N2 all over N1 is equals to EB2 all over EB1. Now multiply phi one all over phi two, which we say this is E B two all over E B one. Now multiply I A one all over I A two. A2. This implies now, N2 was 500, N1 was 400, it's equal to our EB2 is V2 minus 54. All of our EB1, 186.8. The whole of this, IA1, 36, IA2, 45. So this implies V2 minus 54 will be equal to 500 times 186.8 times 45 all over 400 times 36. All over 400 times 36, which gives us 291.88. That's V2 minus 54. This implies our V2 will be equal to
345.88 volts. And that is the voltage required as an input voltage for such a type of motor to increase its speed from 400 RPM to 500 RPM.